Shamai and welcome to Bitcoin Car Pro. the show we have a quick look at the Bitcoin price and some of the other markets may be affecting it. The price at $8,119.3 had a high of $8,200 and a low of $8,050. Uh, it did pretty much what we thought it was going to do. We had that ascending triangle and then it's fulfilled that triangle um, and then it's dropped back down. Um, and it's bouncing just above $8,000. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it makes its way back into this channel, but it's been nice um, uh, organically kind of poking its head out of the past the $8,000 resistance, um, which has been quite good for Bitcoin, I think, and the price. Uh, I imagine we'll probably drop towards this, this channel and then maybe there'll be some whale, whale action to push the price up, or we'll drop back into the channel, bounce around in here for a little bit longer and then and then hopefully make our way back up. Uh, let's have a look at the news feed, shall we? See what's going on in the news. Finral, fin, Finra finds ex Merrill Lynch employee for mining crypto, 14 banks, five tokens, finality, expansive vision for interbank blockchains. Um, yep, they're stealing our, uh, they're stealing our technology. Uh, although in saying that, Halfini did predict that uh, Bitcoin would be a settlement uh, um, layer for banks or in, in between banks, interbank uh, exchange because of the scaling thing, um, so that's interesting. Uh, Cryptocurrency is expected to remain in Australia authorities to better regulate Bitcoin price predictions. BTUSD consolidates gains above 8,100 Bitcoin confluence. Blah, 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 all pretty boring. Uh, Litecoin, uh, Litecoin has dropped a bit. It's dropped back down into that, that channel. Um, so the pull was too great. It couldn't, it couldn't, couldn't break out of that channel too much. Uh, Bitcoin decoupled, sorry, Litecoin uh, decoupled from Bitcoin in um, on June the seventh, and since then it's been having a bit of a run off the back of the um, the halvening news. So uh, the price of Litecoin today is at one hundred and thirty five point eight dollars, had a high of one hundred and thirty seven dollars and low of one hundred and thirty three dollars. Uh, there's still enough FOMO around the the halvening stuff, which is coming out in August, or Litecoin's halvening in August. Um, in order for the price to stay decoupled and to also go up a little bit more. So uh, we'll see how that goes. For now, though, I imagine it could get pulled back into his channel. Uh, much like Bitcoin, I suppose, being pulled back into his channel. Ethereum. Ethereum's at $259.3, had a high of $264.5, a low of $258. Copying Bitcoin pretty much, um, but in a more kind of like emotional way. Um, so, yeah, the... the it's the same price action as Bitcoin. It's had its little ascending triangle. It was bigger, ascending, bigger than Bitcoin's ascending triangle. And it's fulfilled that triangle. Now it's making its way back down um, with a little bit of a lag, obviously, off the back of the Bitcoin price. Monero's got a bit more of a lag. Um, uh, its price is at $91.7, at a high of $91.7, and a low of $89.8. So Monero's still going up. So it's still fulfilling that ascending triangle. Um, uh, and then it will probably do what Bitcoin is doing right now, which is trace back down. Uh, so it looks like the um, uh, people are buying and selling Bitcoin, then they're turning to Ethereum, and then they're turning to Monero. Um, so yeah, it's pr pretty pretty funny watching those prices move in the exact same direction uh, with that slight lag there. Um, what's going on with uh, crude oil? So we got crude oil up. Uh, I just wanted to look at. Um, because they were talking about the crude oil slide uh, yesterday in, in the news feed. So I was sort of interested into what crude oil is doing. Yeah, it's looking pretty pretty damn bearish. Um, it's, it's still bouncing downwards. Still got dead cat bounces. And they're, 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 they're pretty steep um, slides downward here. Um, so, yeah, the price of crude oil per barrel uh, is $52.3. It's had a high of 53.1 and a low of 50.9. Trump considering sanctions over Russia Nord Stream to Nat Gas Pipeline. Uh, so uh, Trump's trying to um, encourage um, Germany to uh, buy their, their gas and their fuel solutions um, rather than, you know, get into bed with Russia and the Nord uh, Stream 2 uh, Nat Gas Pipeline, which is going to pump like tons of gas um, directly into, into Germany, into Europe. Um, I think it's just Trump doing his, you know, his tough negotiator act, I guess. Um, but the, the, the problem is him uh, threatening sanctions uh, and tariffs and trying to bully bully people because uh, that's when tensions can, can, can get a bit out of control, isn't it? Let's have a look at gold, see how gold's reacting, shall we? So gold's doing uh, pretty much what it's done for the past six years. It's, it's hit its uh, $1,350 uh, 
maybe our resistance there and then it's kind of like bouncing around um, but I've, as I've said in the past couple of shows um, the moves are getting smaller and we are building this sort of ascending triangle so pretty soon gold I think probably will break out particularly with all the sanctions and tariffs and trade wars and all this craziness going on in the markets at the moment um, uh, so yeah and I think it will break out towards you know 1,600, 1,700, which would be momentous for, for, for gold and gold bugs because they've been waiting six years for it. Um, so on the shorter term time frame here, we've got much going on. Uh, yeah, no, we're, 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 just, we're doing exactly what it's done the last few times. So, you know, we have a huge pump up and then um, we have like 50, 60, 70% extra fuzziness on top, uh, which is what's happening right now. So uh, I think it's all dependent on, you know, Fed rate cut and, um, all the other news which is around the corner where the gold can actually break out uh, through 1,400 uh, know, would be amazing and then it'll be up. So let's have a look at the news feed. Gold climbs as stocks fall, Fed rate cut expect, yeah, yeah. Gold price prediction, prices rebound on stronger dollar and higher Chinese inflation. Gold rises as tame US inflation strengthens case for rate cut. There we are. Uh, S&P 500, the S&P 500 is um, still looking a little bit like a dead cat bounce here. Uh, if we zoom out, let's have a little look. Yeah, it's looking like a dead cat bounce. We did have kind of like, we did kind of top, double top and then um, it looked like the prices were going to go higher back in um, back in April there. But uh, we obviously we've had all the, 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 the Trump cards happen. So uh, that's managed, this is the effect he's managed to have on the price despite that being pretty bullish. Um, now this is looking like a dead cat bounce and we're going to get going to get lows the problem with tariffs and sanctions and uncertainty in markets is companies uh, producers being able to plan for the future and, um, and that that has a real negative impact on on markets moving forward so uh, um, it's not just the the immediate effect it's going to have on the markets it's a longer term effect it's going to have on markets too uh, so look at the um, news feed shall we uh, Europe stocks, US futures turn higher, oil jumps, markets wrap. Oil jumps? No, it hasn't. No, right, okay. It stop, stop falling, I suppose, but not much of a jump. Um, European energy stocks lifted by rising oil price, uh, seeking shelter from trade war, fund managers bet on China's consumers. Um, uh, yeah, I saw another article about this, but I don't, I don't really get it, to be honest. If you look at the... Um, Hong Kong, oh, that's another index I'll have to get up. If you look at the, I think it's the Hong Kong 500 top companies index thing, it's pretty similar to the um, to the S and P 500. Um, now in the in the short term, over over the Sino US uh, uh, tariff stuff. Um, so I mean, I, th I there is an argument that uh, this is going to have to make China think more inwardly about their their economy and. Uh, basing it on consumption and services, I guess, uh, but no, I, I can't. Don't see it really, really reflected in the in the charts. So I think that's a bit of a clickbaity article. That one. Dow Jones futures uh, signal fresh stock market losses. Blah 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 blah. Uh, yeah, let's move on. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin Reddit, shall we? Um, see how Bitcoin lands doing today. So the breaking Bitcoin stream still haven't watched it. Maybe I will put that on today while I'm working. Um, just another reason we need Bitcoin and blockchain. To blockchain. <laughs> Technology. How does it become bill could become law backhanders? I'm not sure how Bitcoin and blockchains are going to stop people from having backhanders, but there we are. Um, there's that ad again. Uh, that Stephen Fry heroes. If you, I read that, it's not so good. Mythos, the, the one before. If you like Greek mythology, is absolutely fantastic. I could highly recommend it. Nothing to do with Bitcoin, but yeah. Um, Iranian uh, Bitcoin news on let's talk Bitcoin Bitcoin is the only option we have so yeah Bitcoin being utilized by people who need it um, there's a homebrew South Korean ATM here which is pretty cool um, some some someone's they, they uh, someone's made some local companies made uh, always like seeing the ATM posts um, the pound has been replaced by cryptocurrency in new Watch Dogs Legion game. It's pretty cool. So the new Watch Dogs Legion game is based in the UK and it's post-Brexit. And of course, uh, the UK is falling apart because of Brexit, because that will happen. Um, um, and I'm not being sarcastic. It probably will. Uh, we'll bury ourselves in our own paperwork. Um, 
they've replaced uh, the pound with 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 cryptocurrency it's kind of in a negative light like you know the society's falling apart so they've resorted to cryptocurrency but um which i suppose probably would happen so it's, it's kind of accurate um so looking forward to probably playing that i might get that my boy's almost at the age where i can like play these games with him so i'm really looking forward to being able to because i don't get to play on computer games so being able to you know have some time on computer games again will be pretty cool um uh, money can't buy happiness but bitcoin can here's a little weird little bitcoin thread uh, uh our bitcoin thread here someone's saying that when he had money in the bank that he was so anxious that he feels really depressed and then he he bought bitcoin and now he's not depressed because bitcoin always goes up in price i think you know contrary to that would be all the suicides and uh, depressions and burnouts people have had in bitcoin bear markets so i'm not sure how accurate that is and i wouldn't want that to influence too many people to pour their money into bitcoin because bitcoin is still a very um, unstable asset as much faith as we all have in it obviously um regulate am selling bitcoin spotted near hard right cafe anyone else seen this before this is pretty cool so to begin with i just thought it was an atm with a bitcoin sticker but it's actually i think you can actually um buy bitcoin in it uh, which is pretty cool and it's kind of like built into a legacy atm i'm i'm all for that um i've got a couple of points of sale systems and and uh, legacy sys le legacy hardware which I want to hack into and just get them to accept Lightning and Bitcoin. I think that's the way we need to go. Um, it's cool people building like custom built Bitcoin centric stuff. Um, but we know when Bitcoin really is getting adopted, when it's being built into legacy uh, hardware. And it's, it's easy to build into things. So vending machines, point of sale systems, um, retrofitting is the way forward, I think. Faft. Faft want everyone who spends, who sends $1,000 or more in crypto to verify themselves. So um so that's a bit of a clickbaity article on its own uh so obviously then it, it, it elaborates cryptocurrency exchanges are coming under the threat after financial action task force faft announced planned uh to obtain customer details for clients sending over one thousand dollars in crypto so um it's just the exchanges just the centralized exchanges which is a big case for decentralized exchanges if you need them uh, uh actually having the more regulated exchange more regulated will help adoption it's probably a good thing um, and you still have those options uh, and those options will get more coverage uh, those ulterior decentralized options will get more coverage so it's a good thing um square highs ex google director is first member of crypto team so steve lee who's with google for like uh since like the late 90s up until um there we are uh he left in 2015 after eight years so there we are he's at google since 19 um 1993 that's pretty pretty damn impressive um sorry 1997 good maths ben that's pretty it's pretty pretty much from the beginning and he's working with uh, the cash cash app team now um there we are so square generated 65.5 uh, million in related uh bitcoin revenue in the first quarter of 2019 its highest quarterly volume to date so bitcoin is doing very well for square lots of people buying bitcoin through square it's pretty cool and that's that's revenue so you can only imagine the amount of money which is actually going through uh, the square app um bitcoin boost coinbase launches cryptocurrency debit card in six countries in europe so coinbase had a um launched a cryptocurrency card in uk um and now they're testing their water in uh, other european countries so well done coinbase um you know see how long it lasts um hopefully hopefully you know won't get they won't get banned this time like they were last time um major cryptocurrencies in the green is bitcoin rallies over eight thousand one hundred dollars so yeah this is obviously you know bitcoin's rallying so you get the bull the bully uh, bull market fomo news articles uh there's a thing about sorry barry silbert here um so S silbert saying uh, uh um remains optimistic uh, about crypto's near future silver commented on insurance giants fidelity btc custody option which is huge by the way um for wall street on ramping while isaac's pointed out corporate giants such as microsoft amazon and starbucks they're getting into the game and of course microsoft are building on top of bitcoin's blockchain which is absolutely amazing um and then we've got the cash app so really bullish uh loads of new money coming into bitcoin uh which is great but oh no Oh, sorry, I spoke too soon. Uh, in Forbes, blow to Bitcoin as former banker makes stark price warning. So, um, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency bulls have been out in force the past few weeks and months. 
pushing the Bitcoin price and wider, wider cryptocurrency market to uh, year to date highs. So we've, we've obviously gone up like, more than doubled uh, over the past few months. So it's a lot of new money, but nope, Tone Vase doesn't think so. Um, I don't see too much external money coming to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency space, says the former analyst at US banking giant JP Morgan Tone Vase. He told cryptocurrency trade news, Soin Gaudagaf, in an interview this week, warning investors not to trust the recent rally in Bitcoin and crypto markets. I would say it's important to be very cautious of Bitcoin because it is uh, pretty schizophrenic in its price action and it could easily drop to nothing. You know, it could go to nothing. The whole experiment could fail. That's always worth reminding yourself of. But to say there's no new money coming into Bitcoin when, you know, Square have just released their, their, their um, most successful quarter, um, Fidelity, Amazon, you know, <laughs> uh, Square hiring people like from Google. Um, uh, the very fact that Tone Vase has been quoted in Forbes uh, I would say that there's quite a lot of new money coming into Bitcoin and that's why the Bitcoin price is going up. Um, as I said in my last uh, video yesterday, this is a problem with making bets, uh, on public bets on the, the Bitcoin price going down. He's now got a vested interest in it going down, so I wouldn't trust anything he says um, from, from now on. <laughs> uh, Segwit in the Bitcoin... Oh, this is, this is well worth having a look at. So in the Financial Times... Uh, Isabel Karminska uh, uh, did an article on SegWit and the Bitcoin transaction fee conspiracy theory, in which she speaks to uh, fake Toshi uh, Craig Wright. And there's some there's some cracking quotes in here. Um, yeah, here's one. Uh, all that we can see happening is an alteration of the system to remove logs long term. So this is regarding um, uh, Bitcoin uh, using you know Unicast payments. So taking uh, some payments off chain because they don't need to be broadcast to the whole world. This increases the need for separate systems to record AML and KYC information, which is contrary to the purpose of Bitcoin. So Craig right here is saying, um, because now transactions are more anonymous, we have to have external AML, KYC information collection, whereas he wants that to be done through the Bitcoin blockchain. Is a segregated witness simply a means of handling Bitcoin off to the Lightning Network where uh, logging is no longer required and users can engage in a system that only settles in Bitcoin? Wouldn't such a system be exactly what criminal groups wanted? So he's saying, you know, isn't that terrible that um, uh, using the Lightning Network, we end up getting a better form of uh, an anonymity because of just trans transacting between two people? Um, and then uh, Isabel, she says, uh, put it this way, he has a point. Any dependence on a separate external system is tantamount to a trusted relationship, which defies the whole logic, arguing the world needs to turn to Bitcoin because third parties are untrustworthy. So there's a very uh, Craig-centric article, um, as if it's been kind of like doctored by Craig. And then, rather um, predictably, uh, a few hours later, she release, uh, releases an article Here's how much Izzy paid to move $19 worth of Bitcoin. Um, and then she's complaining. And there's not one mention in here, by the way, about uh, over lightning or second layer or anything. Uh, and then, so in this you know, follow-up article, she just says it cost me like you know, $3 or whatever or $5. And it was really hard to move $19 worth of Bitcoin, blah, blah, blah. No mention of the lightning network. So my prediction is the next article will be uh, Bitcoin Cash um, centric. Uh, so... Obviously, she's been paid off or getting a little backhander from Craig right there. Or well, just, you know, she doesn't really know what she's talking about. She's listening to the to the guy. So um, pretty interesting. So I look forward to the next one of Isabel Kaminska's articles. Can't wait. Uh, yesterday, I was um, working, uh, connecting my gizmos to the... So in Germany, they got a bar called... In Berlin, they got a bar called Room 77. And making a point of sale system for that. Um, so uh, I was I was fiddling with my kids, trying to get it to talk to the the, the their um, node, but their node at the moment they're having like a connection issue with just connecting it to the internet. Um, and it's been annoying as I was working on it, and it's going to get fixed today. So because well, it was like intermittent and on and off, um, I made an LED uh, LND price checker. So if you've got LND, uh, this project costs six dollars. It's an ESP32, and then um, we have a red LED and a green LED, and all it does is it just 
connects to the node and checks to see if the node's connected to the internet. If it's not connected to the internet, it shows a red. Um, so this is quite cool. Like if obviously if it is um, running and running well, then it shows a green. Uh, now I've had nodes running for like six months, not a problem. So um, uh, it's just a, 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 a weird little connection issue they have. But just for peace of mind to have this somewhere with a green LED and you can see it, then if you have any issues with your node, then it will just go red and you'll be able to go and investigate and get your node out and, and see what's going on. So really cool little project for any of you guys out there who have got, you know, got a, um, uh, an LND node running. Um, if not, then, you know, check out, I've got some other um, uh, projects which use services like uh, OpenNode or Strike. So, so check those projects out on my, on my repos. Uh, so yeah, so that's pretty much it for Thursday. Um, and I shall hopefully see you tomorrow.